Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. This video will be a little bit of a departure from my usual tutorials. I wanna to talk to you about where I've been the past week, what I've been up to, and it's gonna be a culmination of a few videos. So we're gonna focus on CCTV, but specifically on storage in the cloud. Now, the main reason for this is if I put my tinfoil hat on, I don't wanna end up in this situation. Well, that's probably not going to happen, albeit there are deer in the woods nearby, but probably more I'm concerned of this situation. Now, in this situation, what do you do? Somebody breaks into your house, they see a nice big shiny server rack, they want to steal it. That means all of your footage has gone. Now, as you know, I use Frigate. I use that within Docker. I'm trying to get it running in Kubernetes, more on that later. But that gives me the flexibility to choose my storage location. Now, in previous videos, you've seen me use Google Drive with our clone, which gives me encrypted backups. And it also gives me the ability to mount that as local storage. That's right. That Google Drive can be mounted just like you would have, say, a Samba or NFS share on your network. And that allows you then to share files and upload, download directly to and from the cloud. That's excellent for CCTV footage because it gives you that immediate off-site backup. Now, yeah, a tech-savvy person who's going to break into your house could get onto your servers and could delete that footage, but let's be honest, it's probably going to be more opportunistic. They're just going to want to steal that device and flog it. This means that if that does happen, I should have that footage backed up in the cloud. This process also ties in nicely if you don't have Google Drive, for example, or you don't want to pay for cloud storage. In my previous videos, I've set up my off-site storage, i.e. my private virtual cloud, where I've got a device over at my mother-in-law's and I have a secure mesh network. It's actually a NetBird VPN which sends all of my data encrypted up to a data share. You could obviously use whatever you want, tail scale, you could use something like a point to point with WireGuard, whatever it may be. The point is we have our own secure offsite storage. So again, the principle applies of I've got my CCTV footage and it's stored somewhere else. Obviously, if you want performance or you want a local copy, you could also sync that up. You could also do another R clone sync job, or you could use something like Sync Thing, which I haven't covered, but I'll get on to. Techno Tim has a great video on that, so go and check it out. But it's essentially the same process. So let's jump into what I've done, how I've got this set up, and some of the decision options that you may want to have. So over on my Docker machine, you can see down here that I'm running Frigate. It's just here. That's actually now using the iGPU instead of the TPU, something that I'll cover in a future video, hopefully when I've got everything running in Kubernetes. Now, the glue that binds is not this container here, albeit I've had to update this container and I'll show the config. It's actually this one down here, this R clone mount. And that pretty much does what it says on the tin. So if we actually look over on the host over here, you'll see that if I scroll up, go to the home directory, I should have a folder called drive NAS crypt. Now in this drive NAS crypt is basically an encrypted storage up on Google Drive that I'm going to map and use for my CCTV footage. So let's have a look at the configuration files. So if I head into my Docker Compose, I'll go into my frigate and I'll show you what I've changed in here. Now I've already put this up online in a previous video. Again, this is slightly different because here I'm using the iGPU on my virtual machine as opposed to the Coral TPU. The reason for that is moving to those MSO1s. I don't really have anywhere that I can put the device into the TPU and make use of it. Also, it's more power efficient and I've also got those good Iris XE IP iGPUs in there. So I'm going to make use of those. That's good because it's actually faster in terms of inference speed than a TPU. And I can also use the same iGPU for any transcoding. Anyway, back on topic. So now that you're aware of the Google Drive NAS crypt folder that I just showed a minute ago, you can see here that I've mounted that. So on the left hand side, remember of the colon, We've got that home Ubuntu drive NAS crypt. And within that, I've got a special folder, frigate, media, and then I've got clips and recordings. So now that frigate container will actually be just 
dumping the footage, basically the clips and recordings, anything that I have interesting footage of, it will put it into those respective folders. Now, thankfully, because I've also had my internet upgrade, this makes the whole thing possible. It means that I can seamlessly upload to the cloud. I have two gigabit symmetrical connection and it's not gonna break a sweat on the rest of the network. So before I could actually use this, I needed to add another container. And that's that R clone one. So let's go down and have a look at what that looks like. So this R clone mount is the one that I've created. So having a look inside this compose, you'll see that it's pretty straightforward and I've covered this in depth in a previous video. But essentially what I'm doing here is using the R clone image, setting it up as an R clone mount. I'm creating a location on my Docker host. So home Ubuntu drive NAS crypt that is gonna be shared with the rest of the host. So that means effectively the container is mounting a location to the host. Typically you would do a host map data volume into a container. This basically flips it on its head. Now in order to do that, I have had to make this a trusted or a rooted container, which is a bit of a security trade-off and you do need to be very careful about what you actually want to share. You wouldn't wanna have this container compromised because it could invalidate all of your backups. That's why, again, we want a three, two, one strategy. So don't use just a single volume mount for all of your offsite storage. Make a specific folder, make a specific mount with a specific credentials, and therefore that all clone mount will only have access to the recordings. Also, do make sure that you sync that offsite somewhere else, i.e. locally or i.e. somewhere else that you've got remote, similar to my Netbird setup. But anyway, you choose what's right for you. Once you've done that, I basically came down to this part here. You need to make sure that you've got Fuse installed, so this is for mounting those file systems. I've covered that in the previous video, so I'm not gonna go over that. The instructions haven't changed. And then we run the command whereby we actually mount. So this is the name of a remote store. This is actually in my R clone config here. I'm not gonna show it because it will be a big edited mess, but I've covered that in a previous video. And all we're doing is saying, hey, R clone, take that mount and put it to this location here. And this location here slash data is actually this location here on the host. So data goes to data, which is actually home Ubuntu drive NAS crypt. Now, when I've got that up and running, I should be able to navigate now onto my host, see all of my files that are mounted, and then I should be able to redeploy Frigate and it can make use of that new encrypted cloud storage. So I've had this system up and running now for about a week and I'm really happy with how it's been performing. I haven't noticed any difference for what the application requires. Yes, it's naturally gonna be slower than something that is mounted locally, however, that's not really an issue for the bit rate of my cameras and I only have a couple of cameras. If you needed something more intense, you might need another solution. You might need to store it locally first and then do some sync jobs to sync it in batches, etc. Whatever works for you. But this means now that I can rest easy knowing that all of my footage is in another separate location and if the worst were to happen and I was broken into, Hopefully I've got that footage of the assailant backed up in the cloud and that would be useful in hunting them down. So drop me a comment below, let me know what your backup strategy is. It's great to see Unify finally being able to give you the option to choose where you store it and hey Unify if you're listening, I'd like to review one of your NVRs, they do look pretty cool now. Anyway, as always, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.